Hi. Today, as a part two to current dividers, we're going to be looking at a large circuit with lots of resistances in. Break down that circuit into some much simplified circuitry and then do the maths on it and within a short period of time we should come up with some pretty good results and I'll show you that we can use the current divider to good effect uh, in several parts of this particular circuit. Let's have a look at the circuit then. Um, here's the large circuit has uh, oh gee what nine different resistances in it with a 60 volt supply all the values for the different resistances I've shown and um, it's probably drawn here and a little bit strange compared to how you'd expect to see a circuit drawn. Um, I mean routinely we see the battery uh, in a vertical fashion on the left or the right of a circuit and then the resistors running down a circuit, something like I've got here in this simplification. So one of the first things that you have to do when you're given a circuit like this to work with is to simplify the circuit and think how it can be put into something which is a bit easier to manage. Um, so what I've done, I've looked at this and said, well, I've got 60 volts, which is going through, well, it's going through a 360 ohm and it's also going through 240 ohm resistors. And therefore, I can add those resistors together and I can make them into one resistance of 600 ohms. Um, and I've done that here. I've got the 60 volt supply now redrawn. And with it redrawn, I've got the 600 ohm resistor, which is R1 plus R9 on the top of my circuit. And then 510 plus 750 is 1,260 ohms and that's going um, between those two resistances. So I put that 1,260 ohms down here on my circuit. So straight away you should be able to see that that circuit is starting to look much more simplified than it is in its original format. And I mean, what I just did there even is a bit strange. You'd expect that I would have left a resistor down here, but hey, the current leaves the battery. The current leaves the battery, positive on the battery there, and we're talking conventional current, so the current leaves the battery. It's traveling around the circuit. The current forks and goes down there and goes down there and then the current recombines and comes back out here. So ultimately, whether the current passes through 360 ohms on its way into this parallel branch and then goes through 240 ohms on its way back out, it's still going through a bulk resistance there of 600 ohms. So that's why I've grouped those two resistors together and I've sat them at this point in my circuit because I've really done a a mass simplification of this today. Um, other parts of the circuit, we've, we've satisfied this, and we've satisfied this, but now it's a chance to look at this. I've got 300 in series with 430, and then it's also in series with the 450, but that's in parallel with 270 and 330. So what I've done, I've broken that down into one simple resistance. And that one simple resistance consists of R2 plus R3 and R4 in parallel with R6. So what I've done, I've treated this as one entire box. And then finally, 430 ohms at the tail end. And that all adds up to make just one simple resistance. So yes, like I started saying, it does look quite simple now that I've, I've done it this way. But we're not out of the woods by any means yet. We have to uh, break this down now and do the maths on the individual parts of the circuit so that we can satisfy the original question, which is to find all currents and all voltages and all powers. It's an old exam question, which was worth 20 marks. 
So this is a really good question. If you can do this question, you can probably get like one-fifth of a total exam paper in the way of marks. And that's a really big uh, thing to be able to do. And anyway, whatever circuit you work on in electronics, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a simple amplifier circuit or an oscillator circuit, even a digital circuit with some uh, split voltage power supplies powering it, you're going to see combinational uh, resistances like this one I've got on the board. All right then, so uh, I can simplify this one more step to get my total current flowing in the circuit then. Um, after I simplify this section here. So that worked out to be 1260, that's 600, but this one here, I haven't got a full value on that one yet. I've just got 300 plus that, plus that. So we need to do the uh, 600 in parallel with uh, 450. So look, if it's only two resistances like that, and it is only two because I've added these two together to come up with that 600 ohms, 600, R3 and R4 together, and they're in parallel with 450. You've got a choice how you do this. You could go uh, one on the uh, 600, plus one on the uh, 450, and one over the whole lot, and that'd be equal to uh, that particular REQ. Alternately, what you could do there, you could use product over sum, sum and you could do uh, 600 times 450 divided by the sum of those two which is 1050 ohms. I'm going to go ahead and do that because that looks pretty easy. So 600 times 450, 600 times 450 divided by 1050 ohms equals 257 ohms. 257 ohms. So now this particular section breaks down to be 257. We can add these together 257 plus 430 plus 300 equals 987 ohms. So all of that 987. 987 ohms and we might just put a bit of a loop right around that to show what we're doing. Um, if you do this on paper, I've explained in my classes before, use some colored uh, texture colors, colored um, pencils even, you know, and looping and doing parts of the circuit in different colors is just as good as doing it on separate pieces of paper because I know some um, other videos that I've used in class, uh, one particular pr presenter, Doc Schuster, does it uh, on different sheets of paper. And that's a particularly good video. That's the one where he starts off and he says, hey kid, would you like to make a dollar? And I, I, I do particularly like that, uh, that video and the way that uh, Doc Schuster breaks it down and does it page by page. All right, so whereabouts are we going to with this then? 987 up that crayon. 987, we've got 1260. We have to repeat exactly what we did here again because I've now got 987 in parallel with 1260 because until I can get a total current for this circuit, I can't really go too much further. So uh, to get a total current, I know the total applied voltage, 60 volts, but I need to find the total resistance before I can get the total current. So 987 in parallel with 1260. 987 in parallel with 1260. Oh look, I wrote this up here on the board before. I did mean to mention that. Um, I do like people to use, the uh, students to use the package called Multisim. Uh, Multisim is uh, marketed by National Instruments and there's a student copy available that, for that. It's about US $41. Uh, price probably varies in different countries around the world. Um, the student edition of that, you can only have about 80 nodes, I think, in the um, 
circuit. So you are limited to what circuit size you can have. But for learning, for doing things like this and putting current meters in and voltmeters and running a simulation on a circuit like that, testing that the mathematics that you're using to derive currents and voltages actually stacks up against the simulated uh, outcomes, you can't beat something like that. So LabVIEW or Multisim, really top-notch bits of software to, to get your hands on. Um, I'm going to do one on 987 then, plus the one on 1260, and then I'll be one on uh, total is equal to that. So 987, what have we got on this calculator? This is an FX82, shift, one on, equals, add, uh, 12, oh, hang on, we'd better go back and just check those values we had in there again. Whoop, 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 forget which one I started with. 987, 987, um, one on, shift, one on, add, 12, 60, shift, one on equals shift one on 553 ohms i can't afford to make a mistake <laughs> at this early part of the uh, uh calculations if i make a mistake at the first at the front end of this everything i do afterwards is going to be no good so i've got to be ever so careful that i do not make a simple mathematical error at this part of the calculations. 553, never lose track of where you're going to with this. That 553 ohms then represents these two in parallel. And uh, I'll put that in different color. I've only got a few colors to work with here. 553 ohms is the REQ for that. So our total resistance, which the voltage source in the circuit is seeing, is 600 ohms plus 553. So 600 plus 553, and this is going to be our total. And it's going to be, what's that, 1153 ohms. 1153 ohms. And that uh, 1153 ohms is what's going to be seen by this voltage source. 1153 ohms. So I, I equals V on R, equals 60, divided by 1153, is 52 milliamps. That 52 milliamps is what's flowing in the circuit here, 52 milliamps is flowing in the circuit here. And of course, Kirchhoff's current law says that uh, what current is leaving the voltage source will be returning to that voltage source. So um, 52 milliamps leaves, guess what? 52 milliamps also comes back out of the circuit. Goes in that way, splits to go through these um, different parallel and series combination parts of the circuit and then and then comes back. All right, now that I know that I've got 52 milliamps, whereabouts can I go to with that? Oh, I almost need a drink. This is a lot of talking in a short time. Getting a little bit warm now. <laughs> All right, that means that I can examine some nodes in this circuit. That means I can examine this node here and this node here because 52 milliamps there, that means I've got 52 milliamps there. That means I've got a current divider situation with different branch currents going down through the 1260 and the effective 553. So, oh, not 553, I beg your pardon, 987. See how easy it is to make a mistake, goodness gracious, 987. Let's put that in, uh, in black against that because I can see I'm probably going to make another mistake with that. So that's 987, that one there. Oh dear. That 553 just represents both of these in parallel. So, 
current divider. What can we do with that current divider? Let's bring across the other board. current divider. Alright, so we've got 1260, 987, 553. 553 is the REQ, the main REQ, the effective equivalent resistance, and then we've got uh, that over, this will be case 1, case 1 over 1260 ohms, times the current which was coming into the node which was 52 milliamps in case 2 will be the 553 divided by remember 553 we already looked at case 1 which was 1260 case 2 will be 987 987 and again times 52 milliamps. All right, let's go ahead and uh, run the maths on that. Oh, what have I done? I've hidden the calculator. All right, calculator back. Here we go. 553. 553 divided by 1260 times 0 0.052 equals 22.8 milliamps. 22.8 milliamps and this one will be 553 divided by 987 times 0 0.052 equals 29.1 milliamps 29.1 milliamps a quick check what do they have to add up to they have to add up to 52 milliamps. Answer, add 0 0.0228 equals, guess what, 52 milliamps. Check. Always run checks as you go. Don't make a mistake at the early part of the calculations, otherwise you've not only cost yourself maybe 20 marks in the major exam, but you're going to you know, just feel bad afterwards, hey? It's not, not good at all. So, um, 52 milliamps total, 29.1, 22.8, whereabouts are we going to with that? All right, I think it's time now that we can, we can do something with those. Going to have to do something with this calculator. It's going to have to go into the pocket. All right. 22.8, I'm just going to write these quickly up here on the board so we don't make a mistake. 22.8 for uh, the 1260. And 987 is 29.1 uh, for the 987. 87, 987. Yeah. Back to board number one. Now that we know the current which is flowing down there, and we know the current flowing down there, we can write them onto this, and then we'll go ahead and we'll write them up here as well. So 987 had 29.1 milliamps, and 1260 had 22.8 milliamps. All right, the 1260 was R7 and R8. So that means at this point here, I've got 22.8 milliamps. And uh, if 22.8 goes in there, 22.8 comes back out over here. And the 
is the combination of from R2 to R5. So R2 to R5, through here then, we've got 29.1 milliamps. If 29.1 goes in, 29.1 comes back out the other side. Now, I can see another little problem for us. We've got another current divider. Oh my, 29.1 comes to this node here. And then it has to split. Some is going to go through him and some is going to go through him. Oh dear, so I've got, I've got to draw a new circuit. I have to bring the other board across again and draw another circuit now with two resistances, 450 and 600 ohms. Oh, golly gosh. Too many circuits happening here. Golly gosh. Bang. That'll fix it. All right, another circuit. So we've got a resistance and we've got two resistances coming down, one of which is going to be 600 ohms and the other one was 450 ohms. 150 ohms. This was 300 ohms in series. We don't really need to know that because we already know what the node current's going to be. We had 29.1 milliamps there, so we still have 29.1 milliamps here. And that 29.1 milliamps is going to come down through these resistors and it's going to come back out again. And it's going to go out through the uh, 430, it's a funny value, isn't it? 430 ohm resistor there. So, current divider again. Case one, case two. It's, remember, it's always REQ over RX times the uh, I node. And uh, here's the node current. So it'll be uh, case one will be, um, oh, what was REQ? REQ for those two, we'd already worked out was 257 ohms. 157 ohms. Do you remember that? We had uh, 600 in parallel with 450, 257 ohms. That 987 represents the 257 plus him plus him. So 257 divided by 450 times 29.1. And case two will be 257 divided by 600 times 29.1. These are milliamps. I'll just know that they're milliamps there when I do the calculation. So these are ratios that I'm working out. Not too hard. 257 divided by 450 times 29.1 equals 16.6 .6 milliamps. 16.6 .6 milliamps. Case 2, 257 divided by 600 times 29.1 equals 12.46 milliamps. I won't round it up, I'll leave it to what it came as. They have to both add up and they look like they do to 29.1 uh, case 1 was the 450, 16.6. Case 2 with the 612.46. Milliamps. Milliamps. Alright, look, I might just um, break this video there. Uh, didn't really want to, but I can see I've gone a little bit over time on this. So I'll break it and I'll call this part one, the end of part one, and then I'll make a part two 
which follows it and will complete the calculations on this circuit. That'll give me a chance to get a drink of water too. Alright, end of part one.